Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been, what, three, three months since I last uploaded a video? You know what, let's check. It's been, okay, this is useless, I'm useless. I don't even, I don't know, whatever. It's been a long time, okay? I haven't uploaded a video in a long time, don't judge me, I didn't feel like it. Um, for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this outfit right here. I thought this was the perfect outfit to film for you guys because there's nothing crazy going on. There's no mesh cutouts, no appliques, no crystals. It's really all about the construction. The fabric is what really makes this costume a costume, but you could just as easily make this out of a plain spandex and wear it for practice or like just around the house whatever you want to wear it for. Even if you were to make this out of a plain spandex, you could easily add appliques, crystals, or really anything onto the base to make a more intricate costume. I'm not going to be going into detail about the pattern for this costume because I really just wanted to focus on the construction aspect of it and show you guys the different techniques I use for different parts of the outfit. But if you are interested in more pattern related videos, let me know and I can always try to make more of that content in the future. I think that's pretty much it for this intro, so let's just jump right into the tutorial. So first things first, obviously I have to cut out the pattern pieces from my main fabric. For this fabric, um, the snake print goes either vertical or horizontal, so like that. I don't want the horizontal pattern going across her body, I want it going vertically on her body just because I think it'll look a little bit more flattering. So that's how I'm going to cut my pattern pieces out with the snake print going vertically. so my snake fabric and I'm gonna lay it wrong side facing up then I'm gonna spray it with basting spray I'm gonna fold it over wrong sides together so it should stick together like that and then I'm gonna take my ruler I'm gonna lay it on top and cut right along the edge to cut out a nice two inch wide strip and then the length just depends on your clients measurement so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will move on to the next step I'm just going to take my lining fabric and I'm going to lay it onto my cutting mat with the wrong side facing up, so a single layer with the wrong side facing up. Then I'm going to spray the wrong side with my basting spray and then from there I'm going to take my pattern piece and I'm going to lay it onto the lining fabric with the wrong side facing down so that wrong sides of both fabrics are squished together and then I'm going to cut around the pattern piece and I should be all ready to go for sewing. together so there aren't many for this uh, outfit so I'm gonna start with the bottom so with right sides together I'm gonna fold it I'm gonna line up the side seams pin it and then I'm gonna surge along both of the side seams which will create sort of like the base for the bottoms um, and then for the top it's just one piece like this so what I'm gonna do again is fold it with the right sides facing each other 
and then I have one single back seam so I'm gonna serge this back seam together and then we will move on to inserting elastic to both of the pattern pieces It's got lots of stretch and it's really durable, so it's just my favorite elastic to use for this application. For the bottoms, I'm going to be adding the elastic into the leg holes, but I'm not going to add it into the waist just because I already have those two inch bands that I cut earlier that I'm going to use for that part. But in order to add it to the legs, all I'm going to do is start at the side seam. I'm going to lay the elastic right along the edge and I'm going to use my serger to keep that in place. I'm going to go all the way around the leg and meet back at the side seam and same for the other side. For the top, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start at the side of the neck. I'm going to go all the way around the back and back up the other side of the neck. And then I'm also going to add it into the keyhole. Just remember that you always want to add the elastic on the wrong side of the fabric, which in this case is the side of the lining. So again, I'm going to place it along the edge. I'm going to serge it all the way around and back to the top of that keyhole, okay? So once you have all of your elastic surged in place, so once you've got it surged along the edge and it's secured, you're gonna take the elastic and you're gonna fold it over, which should enclose the elastic in your fabric, and then you're gonna use a wide zigzag stitch to stitch that in place. Personally, I like to use a zigzag stitch set to 4.8 in width and 2.5 in length, but again, it all varies depending on your machine. That's just my preferred um, settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that the elastic is surged in place right along the edge, I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it over itself so the elastic is enclosed, and then I'm going to use a zigzag to hold this shut. Um, for me, I like to set my zigzag at a width of 4.8 and a length of 2.5, but that really varies depending on your machine. That's just my personal preference. And the thread I'm using is Guterman 100% polyester thread. Polyester is really important when you're using Lycra because it's just much more durable than say your typical cotton thread and it has a little bit more give so it won't snap as easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew everything in place and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to adding the neck band, underbust band, and waistband. So I'm going to start with the bottoms. So I realized that I accidentally cut the bottoms too high. Um, I added in the like waistband measurement to the actual cut of the bottom. So instead of lining up my waistband with the very top, I'm actually going to move it down two inches so that it ends up being the same height that the bottoms currently are. I hope that makes sense. My client's waist measurement is 31 and a half inches, so I like to use the 80% rule. And that means I'm gonna take 31.5 on my calculator, 31.5 times 0.80, and I'm left with 25.2, I'm gonna round up to 25.5. So that means that I want my waistband to be 25.5 inches long. So basically, Lycra has stretch, right? So 80% rule is kind of the general rule I work with. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this waistband 25.5 inches long for the waist. 
Her underbust is 33 inches, so again, on my calculator, 33 times 0.80 is 26 and a half, so I'm gonna make the underbust band um, 26 and a half inches long, and then for the neck, I have her neck measurement somewhere, I don't know where, but this will be my neck. I will cut this to be two inches longer than her actual neck measurement because then I'm gonna fold in clasps so that she can take it on and off easily. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I pin these at their correct measurements, then I'm gonna serge them closed, and then I'll show you how I actually attach them to the top and bottom. Okay, so I've got my waistband serged, so what I'm going to do is leave that wrong side out, obviously it's all kind of the same, um, but wrong side means my seam is on the outside, okay? So I'm going to keep my bottoms right side out, and I'm going to line up, so where my opening would be, so not where the fold is, but where the opening is, it's not open because I glued it together, but um, where the opening is is gonna face up. So I'm gonna place this on the outside of the bottoms, and I'm going to line up the side seams together. So I want my side seam to line up with one side of the side seams. And again, I'm gonna place it two inches below the top hemline. So my ruler's two inches, so that's two inches down, perfect. And I'm going to pin that in place. So now that that's on, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin all the way around, making sure that it's an equal two inches from the top all the way around the bottom. So once you have that all pinned in place, I'm going to take my serger, I'm gonna serge right along the top of the waistband line and that'll cut off my excess here and then this will flip up and that will be my waistband. So I'm gonna finish off pinning the bands to the top and then I'm gonna bring it over to my serger, serge everything in place and then we'll move on to the finishing steps. Okay, so I thought I was done talking but I'm definitely not. So for the top, I just wanna make sure that the two seams are lined up together so there's a single seam in the back of the top and then there's a single seam in the band. So I wanna make sure that I'm lining those seams up together. And then again, I just wanna make sure that the opening of the band, so not the side that's folded, but where the two sides meet, where the opening would be, I want that to face down. So I line up the seams, I face the opening down so that when I stitch it along the bottom and I flip it open, the folded side is facing down and I have a nice uniform finish. And I do just want to point out that when I make the bands, I do tend to make them a little bit smaller than where I'm attaching them to, so if I line it up at the bottom of the top here, you can see that it's about an inch smaller all around. And I just do that because it's a little bit more secure for the person wearing it, and it creates a cinching effect underneath the bust and at the waist, which is really flattering on. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this band in place, and then I'm going to take the bottoms and this top over to the serger, attach them, and then we will go over how to attach the neck band. Band. As you can see, the underbust band is attached nice and easy, so just like that. And then when you fold it over, it creates a really nice look. And then same thing for the bottoms. Waistband is attached. All good. All right, so moving on to the neck band. Super, super simple. I'm gonna take my last remaining band, I'm going to fold it in half and mark the center point. So again, I want the opening, not the fold, but the opening to be facing up. So my center point is going to line up with the center of the neck, okay? And I'm gonna pin that in place. And then all I'm gonna do is follow that along the neckline and pin the rest of it in place. And now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna serge all along the neck. I'm actually gonna start right at the end of the band so I'm gonna serge along here, serge the neck band onto the top, and then serge all the way to the other end. Okay, 
so now that the collar is attached, so it's just surged on like that, I need to deal with the raw edge that's left over once the collar leaves the actual top. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the excess and I'm gonna fold it under like that. And I'm gonna start where the top meets the collar and I'm going to zigzag that in place using a zigzag set to 3.5 in width and 2.5 in length. Lastly, I need to attach my butterfly clip to the collar so it's easy for her to get in and out of it. Butterfly clip is just like a two-way clasp like that, so I attach one to one side and one to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is take my clip, I'm gonna thread the collar through. It is gonna bunch up, but that's completely fine. It's at the back of the neck anyways. I'm gonna fold that under. And then I'm going to use a straight stitch and just stitch that secure. The final step is just to secure any of the loose serger threads from previous stitching. So like this, where I started the serging line and then I serge over top, there is this little chain here. So to secure that, all I do is just take it to my machine and I'll do a really narrow zigzag over the end of it just to make sure it's extra secure and to make sure it doesn't start to unravel um, while it's being worn or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure the serging chains and then I will show you the final result. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.